Okay. So, the best way to do this necessarily, but that's what I'm doing today. Okay, so today I'm gonna do what I like calling hand animations. I need to adjust that for a second. Let's go a little bit wider. I should have done this beforehand. Okay, that should be good. Good enough for what I'm trying to do and how it'll likely end up. Need to clean my hand of any debris. So, animation. What I'm going to do, make a short abstract animation. Hello. I'll wave that way. It's even more so. Uh, across my hand. Um, just small frames, pretty simple, abstracted, and then I'll scan it and animate those frames across. Uh, it's just a varying surface, and that's part of the sort of interest to me. Um, so, first, I'm going to grab my drink, which I put back here for reasons. Because I was setting up lights and stuff and didn't want to accidentally knock it over. Um, but. Okay, so. I need a brush. Let's go with a little one. See how it how it goes. Should be good. Okay, let's just brush here. Get some sumi ink. Twist this around. Shouldn't need nearly that much. Just a little bit more. There's a good chance that I'm going to end up blocking this by leaning over, but just doing a basic sort of animation. Not entirely sure how or what it'll be. Just little guys. I'll wave again. Hello, Marine. I don't think about the fact that a lot of time when I'm the stone frame. Yeah. No, you can't see me actually putting. Let's try this. Move this forward. See if angling it a bit helps. With the perspective. Should help a little bit. Hello, I'm outside of NYC. The metropolitan area. Gives you a little bit more of a perspective on this. Line. Like, no, I'm not blocking the. So that's one, two, three, four, five frames.
So the idea is that a circle gets bigger across the edge, then smaller, and sort of bounces back. As a solid, now it'll get back there, and I'm going to have it go across as a square to sort of refill in that space. This is awkward to keep it on camera. This is Sumi ink, but it's just what I'm using. There's not a particular reason. I just am used to it. Um, this will wash off pretty easily with maybe even just water. Um, but water and soap will wash it off. Anything on your hands, at least in my experience, tends to wash off pretty easily just because there's oils and such. Don't have too many more frames worth of space. Hello, Soimyax. Don't know what your name's about. Hello.
enough space for the one more. Okay, so there's a, let's see how many frames that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, I think it's just two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 40 frames of animation. Just shy of three seconds of the speed that I usually go. Let that dry a tiny bit. And then I need to make it kind of dark. So that when I scan this, there's not a bunch of white space in the background. So we'll make it mostly dark. And I can scan this over here slightly. Slightly away from the slightly away from the light. Actually I'm gonna turn this oh, wrong one. Turn this guy down. Make it slightly more infinite looking. This is just so that uh, it's darker um, for the background and I don't have a white looking bit for the when I'm scanning this. So let's pull up image capture. Scan is connected. Let's see how bright it is. That's pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna scan this at 2400 dpi and I'm just gonna scan my hand uh, it's darker it'll take a minute to scan gotta get to today's one dimension 7-20 Underscore. I have to type one-handed because I can't type with this guy right now. Um, and scan color 240 dpi and we'll make this just the entire space because that's the best option. Okay, so I'm going to start scanning. It'll take a little bit of time. It'll probably take like two minutes. Maybe more. I usually do this at 1200 dpi, which is dots per inch. That's how many pixels it is wide per inch, but I upped it to 2400 because why not? But that means uh, this moves slow, and I have to be careful not to wiggle too much because any movement will mess up or change the image. I can't read my phone either from this distance, so if you're commenting on things, I can't see what's up. Now we are getting to my hand on the scatter. Maybe this is like five minutes. This is great to watch. Shh. 
should have done 1200 dpi but this way i don't have to be as worried about the resolution because these markings on my hand are pretty small they're like uh, maybe a centimeter wide which means in order to get a full like 1080 image you have to get something like 2400 dpi to effectively have it at full resolution at that scale at that size if that makes sense riveting this is pretty fast moving as far as how quickly I'm able to get something done given that it seems like the animating itself takes about as long as the scanning All right, we're about halfway done. Once it gets past my hand, I'm going to remove my hand because this is not a comfortable stance to be in. But I need to get the full length of my hand. And it's going slowly. I can see that Sobel commented, but I can't read it from here. It's like six feet away on my phone. Okay, getting close. Then I get to make everything brighter again in the room. This is a very high resolution image. Do better, better. Do better, better. Ooh, getting close. Getting real close. also is in color which means it takes that much more time <sighs> I didn't think this through as far as continuing to interact and stream while doing this. Okay, I'm going to give it another 30 odd seconds to get a little bit further off. Okay, should be good now. Okay. Uh, I guess I can turn lights back on. Okay. Come on. I 
we've done these before. <clears throat> Number of times. I also got warmer in here because I turned off the fan. Um. And uh, okay. I'm still waiting for this to scan, so it's not. Okay, now it'll be saving. And I might have some issues with dropped frames or stuff as I work through this, <coughs> work through this a bit. Because there's not a super easy way to Image, rotation, one of you. So I'm going to copy this. And resize it just like 1,000 wide. So you can see what the result is. It's getting smaller than it was before. Save this to there. This one's small. Yeah. And scan. Small. Okay, where, okay, there's OBS, oh, and that, comma, image, browse, says help, live design, today's, and it's getting small. Open that up. Move it back. Front part came in. And there you have the scan. Uh, that is a much smaller file than what the actual scan is. The actual scan is... I'm just going to turn it this way. Uh, 2400 dots per inch, um, which makes for a giant image. It's about... Let me try and think. It's about... or it's like 15,000 pixels wide, I think. Yeah, 15,000 pixels wide. Let's get just a square going. That's 1920, 1920. Paste that in there. And find mark it. And then mark out. I don't need that mark yet. Okay, uh, I don't know how well this will work. I know that Photoshop, okay, um, it might. Do I have a thing? Okay, I can't actually do this without restarting my broadcasting thing. So I'm just going to have to either say goodbye or take questions, see what you guys are asking about, or work in the background. And you guys can wait, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes as I...
work through this, but it'll take a minute or two. I was going to try and work on this, but I don't know. And there's a chance that it messes with the playback. Might be a bit jittery because I'm going to be using more uh, memory and such in the process of making this into an animation. You can just hear my computer fan going probably. <clears throat> I'm a tiny bit congested. That's the wrong one, isn't it? Be this good. Okay. Okay. I have not found a super efficient way to do this. It's just frame by frame repositioning of this giant image. The only way I know how to do it. Now 
I need to... Okay, and this is where it's trying to get back to. Okay, from same animation, between different layers, to meet that guy. Uh, on the wall, point one. Supplies. Back a bit. And get. Make these into some JPEGs. Get this folder going. New folder on the dash twenty seven dash twenty twenty underscore scan aligned twenty. Lines make this ten FPS. Render that out. Okay. And then I'll be able to show you what it just did in a second. Once we save out, once we save out, we got it saved, saved, saved out. Now we do an image slideshow. Okay, so the cuts, transition into this, 100 milliseconds, zero loop, okay, let's add this directory, That is not going in order. Add files. <laughs> I don't know if it can handle this many images. Yeah, it seems to crap out at a certain number of images. But here you get sort of the gist of what's happening. I think this might max out at like 30 files in the slideshow. Where's my hand at? There's my and you can see difference in white balance and the fact that my hand is 
kind of pinkish in all in both those images, but in the, uh, this video, this live video, it's pretty yellow. Different color spaces. Let's see if I can get away with opening up Premiere while playing back. Will this play back a GIF? Let me see if it'll play back a GIF. So let's make this black and white. Take curves. Blow out the whites. Darken up the blacks. Make this instead like five seven five seven fifty. Let's see what size gif this gets at going slow because this thing is mess wait let me do this a different way uh, just gonna save Let's see if this is just a massive file or not. So there's my process. Where is my video feed? There's my hand. And I painted out the frames. Then I scanned it very slowly if you're here from when that was happening. Uh, I scanned it at 2400 dpi, uh, which is dots per inch. So if you have a grid, let's say this is about an inch wide, pixel density or dots per inch, well that would be ppi, it's the number of pixels that exist and one inch in either direction. So 300 dpi is a standard for printing, which means that it's about what you would print and what you'd see and what's on screen is typically 72 dpi, but you can get a higher pixel density than that. But if you scan at a higher resolution, then you can print it at a larger scale or view it at a larger scale. So what I did was I scanned this at 2400 dpi, which goes very slowly, but you can get something of this size to a full HD video. But it's slow and such and such that way. Did that save? Nope. Well, let's do a different one. Files, scripts, one files into stack, browse. No, I'm just gonna hit the cancel, cancel, cancel. Trying to save. It's just trying so hard. Um, scripts load files into stack, browse, scan a line, get all these. Okay. Give that a second. Um, so then I scan it at that high resolution and then I bring it into Photoshop. This is this is Photoshop. Got my hand looking very hand like. Um, and this image is like 15,000 pixels by 20,000 pixels. Uh, so I take this image and there's all these little bits going around and I duplicate the layers so I take the image copy it paste it on top of itself with a uh, I'm not in frame I'm trying to do too many things copy and paste that image so you have the image on top of itself and you have these little elements and I put the image that is the next frame that's on top of the previous one 
I put it at a 50% opacity so I can align it and then I return it to 100% opacity and repeat the process. Uh, for this one I think it ends up being about 40 times that I repeat that process which is what I was doing when I was just looking at my computer for a while. Fixed. Nope. This one, black and white. I like using curves. Let's blow it out a bit in either direction. See if I can't see it. That's pretty decent size. Oh, that's because it's one image. I was like, that's tiny. Create frame animation. Frames from layers. Uh, it's actually 38 frames. How do I get 38? I shouldn't have 38 frames. Somehow I messed that up. I should have 40. Anyway. <laughs> Let me go back here and look. Yeah, it's 38. Somehow I skipped something. Let me play this back and see if it works or not. And whether or not my mistake. Flip 107. Must have just missed something, but uh, reverse, no, don't tween. Reverse its frames, turn these guys back on, save this out, and see how large it is. The uh, scanner that I use is a Cano Scan LIDE 400. Uh, it's nice because scans at a decent resolution, um, moderate speed, uh, moderate price, it's under $100, um, and it doesn't require external power. You can just directly connect the USB. That's more the file size I was expecting. Okay, I'm gonna have to scale this down. Let's make it 500. trying to save this as an animated GIF so that I can try and play it back and let you see the full animation rather than just this section. Okay. Actually, let me save this. Not just keep the settings. Save. Live designs. Modify the live space now. And I also don't know if this uh, if OBS plays back animated GIFs even. So new image, okay. Browse go back here. So there's the. Uh, here, let me write it down. Uh, can -o scan L I E E, I believe this is 400. 400. It's sort of split up at those spots. Is that legible? Cano scan L I D E four hundred. Cano scan. It's a Canon, but Canon L I D four hundred should probably pop up. Uh, but the actual brand is just Cano, or the actual name 
model thing, but it's a Canon scanner. So I think I've had more success with Canon than Epson for what I'm scanning, because when I've gotten Epson ones in the past, I have some issues sometimes. Um, so I don't really have much more to go on this sort of deal. Um, any questions, concerns? I've done most of the work already uh, for prepping this for posting. So I'll do that. And uh, I, I don't know any good projectors. I know that I think Epson does better with projectors, but what I have is just a super cheap one that I needed one to upscale things. Uh, it's not the best. It's not super bright, and it's not uh, HD resolution. I don't use it for viewing anything. I just use it essentially because uh, it was cheaper and a little bit more versatile than trying to find uh, an overhead projector. Thank you. Hi, Now, this is a projector that I got so that I could take drawings and then make them bigger. Uh, I also like it just because it has, it comes with either HDMI input or uh, I do some stuff that uses RCA cables and it comes with that. Um, but this is just a big Glax, I Glax, something or other. But if you're trying to view it, I would not suggest that one. It also doesn't keystone super well. Uh, There's some Epson projectors that tend to work better. A lot of the time I don't like projectors in practice because it's never what I want it to be. Um, this animation came from Photoshop directly uh, because there's not an easy way to onion skin uh, well in in the same way, like layer it up and make transparency and then quickly layer it up again. You could conceivably do this in After Effects or uh, Premiere or something else, but having those layered up images works a lot better for me because I can, I'm also just more comfortable, but uh, everything that's on screen was edited in Photoshop. So I darkened the lower image a little bit, the solid one, and then repositioned everything. You can even see just from working on stuff, this is starting to wear off, but I have a high resolution scan. Um, and then uh, it's saved out as an animated GIF. Animated GIF, if you want. Um, and it's black and white because it's fewer colors. So that file is, instead of being like, I don't know, 30 megs or something, it's one megabyte. And it looks okay. It's hard to get color images that have a lot of varying colors in them to look good as an animated GIF. Uh, and keep it a smaller file size. If you save for web, you can save out animated GIFs from Photoshop. Um, I just know it by the uh, position of my hand for the saving because it's sort of buried. It's something that is no longer super practical for exporting from Photoshop, but Uh, I still use it, and it's the most control that I have for optimizing using a program for animated GIFs. Um, I don't have anything else to add unless you guys have questions. Uh, but yeah, I'll put this up, and then I might try to uh, make a shirt that has the hand on it or something. Figure it out. Uh, Sure. I don't I don't know that much about projectors. Uh, so can look into that. Projectors are also they can get pricey pretty fast. Um, 
projectors and displays are something where I usually don't get the newest of anything. I usually get something a little bit older, possibly used, or I get like a super cheap version that just does the bare minimum. Um, because they tend to have certain new aspects to them that make them pricey, but if something functioned like three years ago and I'm not doing it in any sort of like cutting edge area, which drawing on my hand is not particularly cutting edge, then I it's not my favorite to put money into something that isn't a core element of how I'm producing and sharing artwork. But projectors are fun. Uh, that's about all I got on that. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. I will uh, post what essentially you're seeing up there, but it will probably be color because I can get away with doing color as a video file. Uh, and then some sort of shirt where you can, it feels weird for me to like be like, you can put my hand on your shirt, but that's the, the idea going forward. Uh, so I'm going to close things out. And I will try to be back tomorrow. Finish.